hundreds of remarkable buildings across the country are neglected by the guidebooks because of their purely functional nature. One is the television mast high up in Yorkshire's Emily Moor. We invited poet Simon Armitage to put Britain's tallest freestanding structure on the map. But then again, a line of sight, a stripe against the sky, a mark against the mind. In principle, to fish the airwaves, milk the air of meaning, but still leaning into houses, lives. I don't know, for some reason, it blends into the countryside. Even though it's a big lump of concrete, it still blends in the countryside. Why, I don't know. Not when I'm getting near a room, when I can see the mast in front of me. Like it, like it, because we've got that used to it now. We know it's there. We wondered at the beginning what was going to happen to it, but now we've gotten accustomed to it, and therefore you know, we like it. It grows in with us. Of it with affection, really. It's, uh, it's every if you tell people where you live, oh, do you live near Mast? Um, and that's about it, really. That's as much yeah. as it signifies in our life. I suppose when we see the Mast, it's you know, we know where we are, we're, we're at home. Concrete for the best part of a thousand feet. Crowned with a crow's nest observation suite, topped by an aerial that telescopes towards its peak. Totem, maypole, pot thrown on the wheel and treadle of the world, broad at its base but tapering away towards its tip. The whole thing sand, cement and water, made though with an element of play, of sway to let the head nod up to two feet either way. <laughs> Belfry, steeple, peeling, preaching to around six million people. Hollow with a custom built Meccano lattice lift shaft dangling down within it and a plumb line elevator car that climbs for seven minutes. Seven minutes of a job to rise, to ride a shaft that flexes in the breeze inside a cage that rocks from side to side. A case of going back in time. As if we spoke too soon, the spacecraft of the first mast fell, crash landed on the moor in 69, the year the first man made it to the moon. Just like thunder coming down, and I thought it was the ice of the mast. Felled by the tonnage of a coat of ice that caused one of the metal stairs to come alive and swipe or slice the chapel roof clean off with two men shivering inside. The plug pulled for a month, like living in the past again, the art of conversation almost coming back again, and then... Ten riggers worked to erect the new mast. Ten men with hands and faces turned to leather from years of work like this. They willingly accepted the challenge, taking no time off except to eat and to sleep away exhaustion. To a man, they are of Polish origin, and their foreman is Vladislav Poreki. In other words, cheap labor working hell for leather through a spell of specially imported Polish weather worked flat out to bring an end to 27 days of blackout, reckoned at around a thousand pounds per second, per second. 
The third mast made by building underfoot, then hauling, hoisting, pitching up, a trick known in the trade as shuttering, i.e. by buttering the inside of a mould with grease, then pouring in the mix, then leaving overnight to fix, and in the morning cracking off the case, then moving up a phase. This way the shaft becomes a calendar of graft, becomes a record of the pace, at which the mast was raised, each concrete band or loop or circle worth one day of work. But when they topped out a structure like this, they always hold a party to blow off a bit of steam. To take the summit, scale the seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven rungs to where a trap door opens on a world of air. To make the point, because it's there. Steeple, spindle of a sundial, shadow with a reach of miles at sundown, miles at dawn, and with an arm for picking through the web of paths and lanes and roads or ticking through the numerals of farms and homes. Shadow arcing over Emily Moore to Bretton Park and constellated in a syndicate of other aerials on nodding terms with Castle Hill, Paul Moore, exchanging semaphore across home moss, extending influence from Oxford to the Scottish borders, going east before the Ural Mountains, Highest, proudest, head and shoulders. The strange beauty of Emily Moore TV mast. Next week we meet the couple whose dream home turned into a heritage nightmare. And we hear a last minute plea to save what's been described as the greatest power station ever built. Until then, goodbye.